Ever wonder how to prevent your Windows server from getting infected with malware or viruses? Well, Microsoft's got you covered. Windows Defender is the answer. I'm going to tell you how to use it and tell you all about it. All that and more coming up now. Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon, an entertainer here at IT Pro TV, and I want to spend some time talking with you about how to use Windows Defender to safeguard your servers, making sure they don't get infected with malware and viruses is a really important thing. And when we're administering servers, we want to rely on the protection and the scanning engines that are available to us. Microsoft builds in Windows Defender. It's installed by default in the Server 16, Server 19 operating systems. I'm going to quickly show you how you can tell it's available. Then I'm going to show you how to use it, set it up, administer it, both from the control panel in the GUI interface, but also from the command line using PowerShell, because we do have options to do both. Now, when we think about going and finding something that's already installed in the system, especially in server, and we're going to do that from a graphical interface, most of us as IT administrators and Windows-oriented administration professionals tend to say, well, I'm going to go to the server manager, because that's likely where I'm going to find the tool, the role, or the feature. Windows Defender is installed by default, it is a feature, and it's there. And sure enough, we can look in the manage area and see that the feature is installed, it'll be checked off. But when we go to look for it as a tool, we're not going to find it in Server Manager. We are going to find something that says Windows Defender, but it's the Windows Defender Advanced Firewall. And what we're seeing is that Windows Defender has a couple of different elements and protective measures and capabilities associated with it. So I just want to make sure you know where to go to look. If we were to go to the tools area here, you'll see that we do indeed have the Windows Defender firewall with advanced security, but it's just the firewall management aspects. It's not the antivirus, not the malware scanning engine. And so we don't want to use this area and the server manager to figure out where to get to Defender and how to manage it. Rather, we want to go to Control Panel. Now, for those of you that are going to be able to go down to the Start menu and go to Settings because you have administrative rights and you can bring up the settings and go to the Control Panel, that's what we're going to do. Let's pretend I've already clicked on that. And we're in our Windows area right here. And logically, where we would typically want to go be able to find things that have to do with update security, scanning, things like that, with the update and security. So we're going to go in there, and under update and security, we'll ignore the fact that I have a bunch of pending updates right now. We're going to come down in our list right over here, our navigation area. I'm going to go to Windows Security, which is the one I'm highlighting right there. And when I click on that, we're going to then see that we have protection areas, and there are four areas. The top one is our virus and threat protection. I can just click on that individually if I want. The advanced firewall we just looked at from the tools list and server manager is right there. App and browser control, and of course, device security, all of them showing green which means all of them are currently active, protecting, and managing our systems. No threats or areas of concern right away, so we're happy about that. But we can open the Windows security area from this button right on top here and kind of see the dedicated section where all these elements are, and then we can deal with virus and threat protection right from there. So I'm going to click through. I'm going to go to Windows security. We'll bring that up. Got our nice little security area with our shield. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling more secure already. And you'll see right here, as we look at security at a glance, again, we have the four key areas we just looked at. We're going to click through and go to virus and threat protection. We'll make this a little bit bigger so it's easy to see. And we can navigate those same four areas here. And we can take a look at any current threats and do a quick scan, see the last time the scan was run, figure out if there's anything pending we have to be aware of or worried about. We're not going to do a quick scan because a quick scan, even though it says quick, uh, does take several minutes, so it's going to slow down the machine. But you know you can scan right from here. Uh, you'll see we have scan options. We'll take a look at those as well as thread history. And we can go in and we can see with our scan options that we can do a quick scan, a full scan, or custom scan. Notice they're mutually exclusive. We choose what kind of scan we want, and we run just that scan. But we can run as many scans as we want. Once one completes, we come back in, choose another one, and then we have the Activate Scan, Scan Now button down at the bottom. So we have those options. We can look at our thread history. Have there been any issues or concerns that have been found? If so, can we see some information about them? Have any threats been found, perhaps quarantined? If so, I can look at them and figure out how to address them. Are there any threats that have been found but I have overridden and given an allow status to, meaning 
you know, essentially a false positive has been found, that file is okay. It may have information that makes it look like it's suspicious, but maybe I'm a malware researcher. Maybe I'm an ethical hacker operating on a red team or a blue team inside of our network, and I have tools that trigger these kinds of warning alerts and scans, but in reality, they're perfectly fine. I want to then make an exception and I want to allow them. So I have to go in and do that. And I can see that from here. And I can see a full history, not just the abbreviated one, where I click through. Right now, there's no threats. The system is protected and everything is fine. But if there was, I would see a complete list here and I can interrogate and look at the information about each threat individually if I chose to. Let's go back to virus and threat protection. We'll just get back to where we were on our homepage. And I've been through the current threats area and how we can scam. We can look at virus and threat protection settings. I can manage those settings, we'll take a look at that. I can also go in and check for updates and I can bring down updates in case for some reason I feel there's a need to or updates have not been applied. We'll see the last update was done uh, relatively recently, so there's no issue there, but I do have the opportunity to do that. And I have ransomware protection separate from my virus and threat protection, all bundled together, but managed on its own down below. Let's take a look at manage settings. It's where I can turn on and off individual elements like real-time protection, cloud delivered protection. I can also go in and give uh, permission for anything that's found to be suspicious on my machine to automatically be submitted to Microsoft so they can research it. Again, these are the default settings. You may want to modify those. I can control folder access, protecting certain files, and essentially go in and say, I want these to be uh, protected and scanned, and I want to make sure not only are they protected and scanned, but that the system really does everything it can to prevent external bad actors and unwanted processes, malware, viruses, et cetera, from getting into these protected areas. I could also create what's known as an exclusion. An exclusion is going to allow me right down here, let me just scroll down, there we go, is gonna allow me to say, you know what, I wanna carve out certain folders. Maybe those folders where I keep those tools I was just talking about that I wanna grant an exception to because they were found to be problematic even though we know they're not, why don't I just exclude the directory and not scan it in the first place? I could do that. I could simply say, scan everything but the C colon backslash Adam folder, and therefore I don't have to worry about it. I can also specify how notifications will be delivered. So when there is some sort of critical information, something's gone wrong, I have to be aware of a threat or a virus that's found, I could be told that in a variety of ways. So we have all of these capabilities here, and I can go in and I can specify what kinds of protections I want and how I want them to run, which is very important when we're thinking about configuring the system. I can also look at the ability to check for updates. I can do this, go in, and I can simply click check for updates. It'll go out, download any updates it finds automatically from Microsoft. And I can do that while I'm doing other things. That can just run in the background. And in addition, I do have my ransomware protection area Right down below here, I can manage that ransomware protection. Remember, ransomware is a certain kind of malware where ransomware will try to lock out and potentially encrypt the system, demanding that I pay money or some sort of you know, uh, information is provided, who knows what the ransom would be, in order to try to get back access to my system, to get the bad actor to unencrypt and give me back control. It's become a very big thing today, and Microsoft's built this protection right into the heart of the Windows Defender product. So we like that. You'll notice I can go ahead and I can turn this on. It is not on by default. Then I specify protected folders, and then I can configure how this is gonna work. I can go in and I can specify, as you see here, there's a built-in list, Microsoft says, the core system files, and the core areas where we store data, documents, pictures, all that kind of stuff, videos, et cetera, will be protected automatically. But I have the ability to add additional protected folders, probably folders that contain work product data that I create or that any of you will create. We have that capability as well. So we can do any and all these things right from here. Now, this is all nice, it's pretty, it's easily accessible. I point and click, it's all good. It's easily uh, understand what's going on. But for those of you that like a challenge, that wanna use the command line and or, want to be able to use PowerShell, rest assured, we can still manage this process entirely from PowerShell if we need to. I want to quickly take the last minute or two of our conversation and show you how we can do basically all the same things 
right from the command line. Speaking of the command line, let's start there. I'm running the Windows command line as an administrator, and I've issued the SC query command uh, with the win defend element being targeted, meaning go in and query the system status on, in this case, the service name win defend, which is the name for the Windows Defender service. So we can see the status is running. So this is how I tell that Windows Defender is actually up and running from the command line. Now I can do the same thing from within PowerShell if I choose to, but I just did this particular one in the command line for a little bit of just variation. Now I'm in PowerShell. I've also loaded PowerShell up as an administrator, so it's important to note that you'll wanna be aware of that. And I've just taken the liberty of writing out a series of PowerShell commandlets as well as the query I just issued in the Windows command line for you to be able to see the kind of things we can do, get MP computer status, right? MP Microsoft protection, malware protection. So we can go in and we can issue this command, for instance, in PowerShell. All right, so let's go a little paste it in and we'll see what this does. This is actually gonna show us, as I was just suggesting to you, the status of the system. And we can see, and I'm just gonna move this over just so that we can see this a little bit easier. We'll scroll up here. We could see that it is indeed up and running, right? Our running mode is normal. Our service is enabled, set to true. We could see spyware is enabled, set to true. We see the version numbers, all that. All that's good. And what that means is, we'll just take that full screen while we're doing this that we're able to even see real-time protection is enabled. We just turned that on. You could see that right there as well. So what that means is we're able to check that status the same way we did from within the GUI. And you can see we have other commands here. We can look at all the threats that have occurred in the system as well as seeing the detailed threat detection reports. We went through and saw that. We can look at the entire update catalog and see what threats are listed there so we know what we're being protected against. We could set and turn on and off things like real-time monitoring just by issuing this command, just like we would by toggling them on and off inside the, the control panel in the GUI. We can even add in an exclusion path and say do or don't scan these folders, like the Atom demo folder. I could update the signatures, just like we said, update from within the control panel. I can issue an update function right from within PowerShell, and I could also kick off and start that scan that we were talking about as well. And so we'll just take a look at one more as we're wrapping up here. If we wanna update our signature, we can grab that one. Just go ahead and paste that in. Just go ahead and do that right there. Let's try that one more time, one second. Sometimes PowerShell. Gets a little funny. Let's do update MP, and we'll just do MP signature. We'll just use auto tab to complete. We could do the same thing. Sometimes pasting isn't the best way to go. And you can see it's gonna run, do its update. There's no updates pending as we saw in the GUIs. There's no reason for it to go out to the web, but if there was, we would simply issue a check. It would go out, we'd see the traditional download window. Updates would come in, be added in add it to the real-time protection catalog, and we're off to the races. Everything is working just fine. So you can manage via PowerShell as well as via the GUI. For all of the capabilities associated with Windows Defender, we've really gone through the majority of them, but we've scratched the surface on the broader issues in this episode and this discussion about how you administer Windows securely. If you want more information on that, you can always join me and all my fellow entertainers over at IT Pro TV, where we have all of your needs covered, whether it's certification, training, tech skills, you name it, not just on Microsoft, by the way, but on Cisco, on VMware, on all of the technology vendors you're using every day in your organizations and you're certifying on in order to continue learning, continue becoming even better than you are today as IT professionals. We always have you covered and we look forward to spending time with you. Until I see you over at IT Pro TV, I wish you happy scanning, happy antivirusing, and of course, most importantly, stay safe and secure when you're using your systems. I'll see you soon.